at the time, yes, it was kind of hurtful. And I said, well, what's, maybe I shouldn't be here. Like, what's the point? But then people were very, people around me, the agency and a few friends that I made were encouraging and saying, no, you should stay and, you know, you'll do more work, don't worry. Many people say, oh my God, we loved you so much. Yeah. And then many people say, oh my God, yeah, exactly what you said. Um, and I think that at that time I'm like, well, you know, they don't even know that. I don't even know what the hell, like what I was doing and I just came out of nowhere. So is it really my fault? There's people flirting or like insisting or being a little extra. And for me, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna lock myself up in my house. <laughs> no human or no person is really well equipped for encounters of the, that sort. Yeah. Um, but I try to keep myself away from all of that and people who are like that if I am aware. Some people may say, oh, maybe I wasn't friendly enough also, but you know, I'm alone here. I don't, didn't have yeah. any like... You had to protect yourself. Yeah, so like who's protecting me except for me? There was something very funny where it said I had moved into another actor's house that we were dating and then my mom <laughs> came down to visit and this actor that they were talking about, I only met him once. Hello everyone, I'm Radrani and welcome to Speak Easy. My guest today is an absolute outsider in its true sense. She came here, she was loved and now she's back to win your heart again. I'm talking about the most real person that I've known. I'm talking about Nargis Fakri. Hello Nargis. Hi. <laughs> I was like holding my breath wondering how the introduction was going to go. That was Why? fabulous. Thank you. But it's true. Thank you, you. Thank you. You've been among the most real people that I've known in the industry. You've never been afraid of saying what exactly is on your mind. Yeah. And I know for someone who had you know, come from all the way from outside the country and you made your space here, it was not easy. So I would like to start there. Okay. When I came here, it was so exciting yeah. because I didn't know anything. So mm -hmm. I was very like naive and mm -hmm. excited and before coming to India, I've traveled all over the world sure. on my own. So I was just looking forward to experiencing what is India and connecting with my own roots as well. Uh, and I was excited to try the food, to meet the people, mm. to see everything, to be touristy. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. So I think when a person like me, I have an open mind, open heart, yeah. because I want to embrace all the experiences. I guess what you're wanting to know is maybe like the obstacles that I face. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's very obvious that as you can hear my accent, I am, I'm from America. Mm. And even though I'm half Southeast Asian, I'm also half European, but born and raised in New York City, I didn't grow up hearing Hindi or Urdu. It was just English spoken in the house. So my mom was a driving force on always letting me know that I should explore the world and see the world. So when I ended up in India, I'm not sure if you know the story, it was totally by accident. But prior to that, I had this existential <coughs> crisis where I wanted to know my heritage. Yeah. Long story short, after Rockstar, I did get a lot of film offers, but I think because I had people managing me, because obviously I didn't know what I was doing, so yeah. you have to get an agency, people sort of carve out your journey for you based on their vision or how they see where you can go, or where you fit in. So I remember receiving uh, some stories that I read and I really loved, but back then it wasn't really, like, I guess you couldn't work with everyone. You had to be picky or mm. choosy because you wanted to have... A brand. Yeah, you are a brand, exactly, you said it. You're a brand, yeah. which I'm a brand, I'm a commodity in some way as well. I know, I see you roll your eyes, yeah. but it is, that's the fact. In a way, you're it's also true. a brand. Um, I think that when other people have the vision, because I didn't have the vision, because I didn't know mm -hmm. what kind of vision to have, I just came here randomly, like, yeah, cool, this is a great new thing I could do, yeah. and I can explore, and I can meet people, and, and get to know this country, because I traveled to like 50 other countries before, so now this is just another one on my list. But no, the, this became a business and a yeah. job, which I let other people, you know, lead me because I didn't know, you know. Uh, so what I was getting to is that I would get stories, but because of 
maybe actor, producer, director was not a good fit. Yeah. Whatever the permutation combination was, it might have not worked out. So I couldn't do what maybe I would have loved to have yeah, done. Yeah. Not to say the other films that you have seen me in, I was very excited to be a part of. And I'm so grateful they were uh, with big actors, great directors and great production. So in that way, I was very blessed. So you can say picky choosy, like that would be the past picky choosy. But in life, we should be picky choosy. You know, yeah, like with, in anything, in everything you do, we should want the best for ourselves. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I think in the decade, whoa, sorry, in the 10 year decade just sounded really strong. Yeah. In, in those years, uh, it was a huge learning process for me with a lot of bumps, um, but a lot of gr uh, smooth rides, bumpy rides, just like regular life, the ups and downs, yeah. uh, trying to figure, figure things out. How does it work? Also trying to keep my authenticity and my childlike, you know, one wonder, nature. wonder, yeah, yeah. nature. Um, so that also didn't always work out well for me, mm. you know. So now that I'm here, back again, <laughs> it's a new me. Um, the 2.0? The 2.0. I think I'm wiser and I grew a lot and I have more understanding of what I want to do and what I want from life and this, yeah. you know, or yeah. what I want for me. Also, what are my boundaries? What, what I can tolerate and what I can't. Uh, I know who I am. What can I do? So like when I read a script, I have to visualize it. Then when I read, I'm reading my character parts, I have to see myself doing it. Because for me, it's a, uh, visualizing is a big thing. Of course. You talk about manifesting. I really need to visualize. So then I, I could say, honestly, like, you know, I don't think I really could do this role. I don't, you know, maybe there's something else for me. But with that said, I'm very open to trying new characters. Because with the whole OTT mm. explosion, yeah. we have more content, uh, more characters. And like, it seems like there's a diversity of uh, stories out there. Yeah. It's not just one particular kind. So I'm hoping people could see me in a new light as well and offer me roles that are different from what I played. That would be nice. That'd be really nice. Yeah. And I think you deserve that. Thank you. The one thing that I feel is similar between the Nargis that I knew, who absolutely made hilarious jokes hey. off camera. <laughs> I think you retained that quality of even amongst like, you know, in that chaos, I feel like you still kind of stayed true to who yeah. you are. And I think that's difficult. Yeah, maybe. You know, I think at heart, I just want to be happy and positive. Yeah. But life is, I don't want to say life is tough. Life is like, you just don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. and, and being human is being emotional. And, you know, you have your ups and your downs. Yeah. But I truly want to always be happy and make other people happy. Like, you know, I like laughing. And yeah. I like when you laugh, when I tell you a joke. I know. And sometimes I like being a little outrageous because you get a shock value or a laugh. <laughs> Love that. And everyone gets a good belly laugh. And doesn't it feel great to just laugh? Like, 100%. oh my God, it feels so good. So that is just, yeah, my natural self. And thank you for noticing that. Of course. Because I was trying to be more serious and focused. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was a lot said about the time that you, um, you know, wanted to leave right and I wanted to make the decision I feel even that takes courage right because you mm. had something going already there and then you decided you know I am not okay with where things are and I want to I want to go back to doing um, you know whatever I want to do at a different place again I and can touch upon that where yeah. that decision was made because I was working so much and I think many people out there might understand when you're working oh my gosh like every single day you don't have time off you come home to you know, an empty house, yeah. your family and friends live in different countries, uh, you don't really have a support system, it takes a toll on you. And for me personally, like uh, an, a lifestyle of good sleep, good food and proper timing, like I guess it would be a regimented lifestyle sure. is really important to my physical and mental well-being. And I think I just worked so much without uh, time to really relax so I kind of ran out of batteries mm -hmm. so I had to just go get some batteries and I think everyone should do self-checking to see where they're at because sometimes we don't know that we're burning out 
and you know, health, right? Yeah, so like even your physical health, like you can have adrenal fatigue, uh, you can have fibromyalgia, which are things that doctors don't really understand, but it's caused by stress. And mm. it's actually, you actually physically feel uh, ailment in your body. You, your body hurts, like you're achy, you don't yeah. feel good. Um, amongst other things that can happen. So I think uh, I was doing really well. I was on a roll. I had so many movies coming out and I, I had the courage to say, oh, wow, you know, I actually need to take this yeah. uh, little break because if I didn't, I'm no use to anyone, you know, not even myself. So that was great for me. And when I had taken that break, which was not that long, maybe it was like a year and a half, Oh, you're gonna have, when, when did the pandemic hit? Uh, it was like two 20, years. 20 yeah, so it was about two years. Yeah. Uh, and then I was coming back and I had booked a ticket and I was really revved up about getting back to work, coming back to Mumbai. I said, okay, before I go to Mumbai, I'm doing this Vipassana thing. I don't know if you know what that is. Of course I know. And I was like, because I've been wanting to do it forever and I have the time, I'm doing it. When the Vipassana retreat was over, I had all these missed calls and messages that like the world is coming to an end. You better go back home. You better buy food. And I was so zenned out. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> but that 10 days uh, meditation and no talking, I think also just really relaxed me so much that nothing that was being said or that was on the news actually scared me. So that time, then it was another two years that added on. So I, I had a lot of interviews where people were like, oh my God, it's been so long <laughs> since we've seen you. I'm like, guys, COVID happened. Did you yeah. forget? Mm -hmm. So that extended my, I guess, disappearance, mm -hmm. which then people wow. made it feel like, oh my God, she's been gone forever. True. But I have not been gone forever. Sure. Um, and I'm back, so that's cool. And so that, yeah, that was the answer to that question. You know, I, I remember that, you know, you had, you had spoken about how you know that you were not here just for fame. Oh, so, yes. you know, you were not taking up random things. You were not, you know, people asking you to just do random nudity. You didn't accept that. You were not sleeping with directors. And which is what you very directly said that, which makes me think about, it is harassment, right? That you mm. go through. How did you deal with that part? Because you know you you stayed strong and mm. you still stuck to your path and, and at the end did what you wanted to do. I feel like besides courage, it's also the way you handled your mental health at the time that I want people to know about. Well, you know, I think I'm just a person. Oh, I don't know how to put it in words because I don't judge other people. Like everyone does what they got to do to do what they got to do. And of course. it's, you know, they say it's survival of the fittest, but I'm not a type of person that's so hungry that would just do anything. That's for, yeah, for my own mental health. And I know who I am and I know whatever it is, I, like I wanna be like happy with myself mm. and feel good about myself. And there's nothing more important than taking care of me and my mental health and my physical health. And when it comes to work stuff, yeah, you know, we encounter different types of people, yeah. you know, like I actually was very lucky I didn't have maybe like hor as horrible stories as maybe some other people. But you know, there's people flirting or like insisting or being a little extra. Pushy. And for me, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna lock myself up in my house. And <laughs> just like, what do you do? Yeah, I just get away from everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because obviously no human or no person is really well equipped for encounters of the, that sort. Yeah. Um, but I try to keep myself away from all of that and people who are like that if I am aware or if I have, like I have an intuition too. So I know like how to have a boundary and like, you know, keep arm's length. Yeah. Some people may say, oh, maybe I wasn't friendly enough also, but you know, I'm alone here. I don't, didn't have yeah. any like- You had to protect yourself. Yeah, so like who's protecting me except for me? Maybe I would, maybe I misjudge certain things too, just because you want to always, like I'm always on high alert. You know, as That's being a, women, a single woman, yeah, high alert, high Absolutely. alert. Absolutely. Even in my in New York, growing up, I was always on high alert. You know, always looking around, always making sure, coming home in the evening, always looking who yeah. is around, crossing the street. If I saw, you know, maybe a group of guys walking, I would make sure to go to the other street. I don't want to encounter or have a confrontation yeah. that could lead to something that we don't want. So I technically, technically, always like remove myself from, yeah. yeah. Like I said, I think it takes courage, you know, dealing with that harassment, then making your own way. And, and then, of course, you know, you, um, you did what you wanted to do. 
And now, as we are calling it the Nargis 2.0 <laughs> with Shiv Shastri Balboa. It's a, it's a tongue twister. It is, it's yeah. Shiv Shastri. With this film, I, I also feel like this character is slightly closer maybe to who you are in real life because you get to do a little bit of goofy and from what I've seen in the trailer, I think she looks like someone, she's like living a life, you yes. know, um, and doing her own thing. Yes, and it's actually, And slightly yeah. goofy. Um, she's a little, yeah, like she's just, also I don't know if takes charge of things when she wants to, I feel. Yes, yes, she's an independent, See? yeah, independent girl. Actually, it's cute, she sells donuts. Oh. And it's, it's quite funny because the character that Sharab is playing, Cinnamon uh, Singh, Correct. he, uh, they end up getting together because he keeps ordering these donuts because he just wants her to keep coming. Correct. Yeah, so it's cute. quite cute. Um, so yeah, she's a, she's a bubbly, fun, vibrant girl with, with lots of love and positivity inside yeah. of her. And uh, this takes place in Pennsylvania. So I don't know if you know America, but I do. like I have a friend from Utah and she is so kind. Like she just talked to strangers. She's like, hi, how are you? It's so nice to meet you. Yeah. So actually when I was playing this character, I was thinking about her <laughs> because I'm not like that, yeah. but I thought that this character was like my friend. Yeah. So, like always saying hi to everybody. Yes, yeah. and so lovely. And she's always like, I'm so happy to meet you. And actually say that line. So she was like, I have to call her and tell her that. Actually, she'll laugh so hard. You're like, you're my inspiration. Yeah, she's <laughs> the sweetest. Oh my God, she's so lovely. So she was my inspiration, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and this character is, she loves her boyfriend, Cinnamon Singh. She wants to get married, but she has conflict with you know, her mom, her mom doesn't mm -hmm. approve. So that's like our journey and my journey. Sure. But then we have Anupam and Nina and they are on their journey and somehow our worlds collide with them and then all of us end up going on this journey together. And like, oh my gosh, it's, it's hilarious, it's sad. Like it's got so many things going on. There's so many layers to the film. Yeah, yeah. So, so we should refrain from using senior citizen or elderly or old. We should say experience. My mother likes it. Yeah, tell I just want to tell you, my mother likes being called senior citizen because they oh, she have, does? Because she, she <laughs> says, <laughs> she gets I'm senior citizen, I need to go first in the line. Ah! Nargis, <laughs> my mother loves okay. it. She would not call herself XP. You have to understand, <laughs> I guess. She okay. loves it. So I didn't know that side, but you know what? Go ahead, girl. Get your perks on. Get your senior citizen oh, discounts. Right? Don't mom, get any discounts. Please oh, yeah. go get all. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Okay. So that is hilarious. And I love that. I yeah. just really love that. Uh, There's just so many things. You definitely just go see it. I it's think you love it. Yeah. It sounds yeah. like a really it's fun one. It's lovely. Like, for me, when I think of this film, I say, I think of the word lovely. It has a lot Fantastic. of heart in it, yeah. Nergis, you know, you told me that you are wise and I feel you are. Really? I feel like you, I feel like now, it's very difficult to ask an actor what do you want because most of the times answers say, I don't know, I'm still figuring what I want. There's so many things yeah. I want. I want to ask you that, what are things that you don't want now as an actor? That I think is an easier question to probably ask because I think you- Actually, you know, no, I know what I no. want. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I know what I want. I want, I'm back because I want to work and I want to work in all sorts of uh, genres yeah. because I think that uh, I'm the luckiest person in the world that I have this job where I get to experience being different people. Mm -hmm. So I get to wear the shoes of many different people uh, in this one life because the more characters I play, the more experiences I have, the more wisdom I gain, and the more I grow as a human being. Uh, it adds to your journey. Yeah, it's wonderful. Like, I can't explain the feeling of just experiencing life. Wonderful. Yeah. But like I asked, is there something that you don't want to do? Are there characters or things or maybe or, or maybe not do films that have certain things that oh. goes against what you believe in? Yeah, you know, I don't want to say this because maybe things like it just depends how it's depicted but I'm not a big fan of nudity mm. so that's my own thing I feel like that we can be more creative and create a scene that or or yeah a scene that needs to be told in a different kind of way where you don't have to be naked like yeah. I see a lot of nudity in the west and it's not really my cup of tea like a lot of times like, ah, oh, do they really need to put that in there? Yeah. Was that really necessary? Yeah. So that, that can be something that I would not 
uh, yeah. consider doing around the time when your when your first uh, film came out with Ranbir you know the focus was all about oh my god um, you know we could have had someone who who have done better acting yes. and this and that you got a lot of comments which was a lot for someone who really really was fresh yes there yes. and was put in a set who didn't know anything yes. right i thought you handled that very well in fact you were making some of the jokes on yourself i remember <clears throat> talking to you once about it but i know that a lot of it can also be hurtful for someone who's just joined yes. the industry right saying that oh we can only see lips oh we yes. don't know whatever i remember we discussed about this also yes. once you've been someone who's handled that at that time well and now is the time when the trolling has taken another another limit with the social media boom. oh my gosh cuz that time we didn't have that's that exactly much. what i yeah it wasn't so popular social media so i want to know how you handled it then but yeah i want to know how you handled it then how and and how are you handling it now because now when you see old clips and when mm. they put all of that it, it's not like it's it's so stopped has it um you know i think back then was a little t- more tougher because everything was in the newspaper uh so it was a little more in your face or maybe it was tougher because i didn't know what to expect yeah so i didn't i wasn't looking for anything but and i wasn't expecting anything mm. cuz i didn't know what to expect so i've had many people say oh my god we loved you so much yeah. and then many people say oh my god yeah exactly what you said um and i think that at that time i'm like well you know they don't even know that i don't even know what the hell like what i was doing Absolutely. and i just came out of nowhere So is it really my fault? You know okay. that but it doesn't even matter if it is nobody's fault. And looking back, I somehow got so blessed, I guess, or maybe it was kismet that that was what I was supposed to be there yeah. and supposed to do it. I don't know. That's how the journey was. You know, maybe I manifested it because I wanted to know my mom's heritage and my dad's heritage because yeah. we shot in my mom's country and then we shot in North India. Mm. So the power of my mind made this happen i don't know or god or destiny or whatever it is something was there so i did it and that's it so at the time yes it was kind of hurtful and i said well what's maybe i shouldn't be here yeah. like what's the point but then people were very people around me the agency and a few friends that i made were encouraging and saying no you should stay and you know you'll do more work don't worry So they encouraged me to stay. So that was great and I'm glad I did. Um and now with social media and the trolling because we're so well aware that people say anything. Mm. Like people just say anything. I don't even know if they know what they're saying. I don't even know why they say it. They say it for attention maybe also. Yeah. Which that's kind of sad, but but I think it's worse for female actors, you know, because they feel yeah. like they have the agency to say anything, whether you, whether it's the way you look, whether it's your body, yeah, you know, uh, you know, body shaming is of course yeah. their favorite thing to do, and I I feel like it's yeah, I think like for me, I just don't read anything or look myself up because I really don't care because none of their opinions matter, yeah. and like hello, you're not getting paid to look good, so Next why time. would I even listen to you? Where are you? hiding behind like under the bed on the toilet with yeah. a big old paunch you know I don't know what you look like mm-hmm. yeah so i think you can't really take that to heart and so i guess i can say through my journey i learned to have a bit of a thicker skin and better understanding Wonderful. of what is happening and why it happens and for some reason human beings love their atten- love attention as we yeah. see social media has created a lot of interesting personalities out there. Yeah. Because they crave attention, they're dying for the likes, and we also notice how that plays on people's mental health if they're not getting Oof. the likes. Yeah. They don't feel validated or or appreciation. And also a lot of female actors have spoken about how when they came in, you know, they were suggested to look a certain way and only dress a certain way and either be more sexy or less sexy and mm. and all of those comments. I want to know how it was for you because you of course eventually you know like now i see you today of course it's you're a different person and you know what you want but i think back then there's a lot of pressure isn't it to look a certain way so actually for me back then because i come from a modeling background yeah. so it it was a little bit different and so i already knew i was a certain type of body or look that people could could use as a muse for fashion yeah. and i already knew how fashion like you think uh films are bad oh, fashion. fashion world I is know. a whole nother freaking beast 
Yeah. Like you, you're, they, oh, you're I can't never even thin speak. Enough. Oh my God. You're never thin enough, are you? This industry is way more uh, forgiving than the fashion world, yeah, I'll tell you that. So, so when it comes to that, I was already in a space of, I know I have a great body, you know, yeah. uh, because I've modeled for so many different brands. Uh, I look good in almost everything. Yeah. Uh, and that, so that part didn't really bother me as much. But I think just figuring out style and then my regular self, I'm a very simple ponytail and no makeup and jeans and sneakers, yeah, yeah. which they didn't allow me to really wear that. <laughs> so I had to, yeah. you know, but we have a stylist, so that helps. I know, but it's exhausting. I'm sure. It is exhausting. I will say, I did say this earlier to somebody. I said, you know, women have it really tough because we are looked at as kind of like objects in a way. Always, mostly. And the way we look is more important than our brains or anything else. And that is, you could change a lot today because of all yeah. the stuff that's out there. And it's easy. I mean, I hear people taking out like credit cards and putting their surgeries on credit cards and stuff, yeah. which is fine. I actually don't even, that is okay because. I feel like if it makes you happy and you're a more confident person, then you should do what makes you happy. We were asked about, oh, have you, you know, have you ever got surgeries? And you had spoken about, I'm absolutely all right. I said I'm open to it. Yeah, yes, yeah, open yes. to it. I'm, I'm like, like, I didn't get any, but definitely when I get yeah, old. Yeah, but you had said also is about how if anybody who wants to get it, it's all right. Yes, right? yes. Well, I, In I, a perfect <laughs> world, I would love that everybody would love themselves the yeah. way they are, but this is a ruthless world. I agree. <laughs> it's not easy. So it's not easy. But hopefully we can find something we love about ourselves that we can hold on to. Um, like I'm gonna be old and wrinkly one day. And you know, okay. unfortunately as women, we get either shelved or put in different categories because there's the ageism and then like people wanna see the youthful woman. As for men, they're quite lucky as they age, they get more, uh, I don't know what you call they're it. They're supposed like to be handsome. aging like wine. Yes, yes. They're getting more, yes, you more know, handsome. classic Yeah, men. classic and all. So I think that for me, the most important thing, like when I talk about beauty, it's mostly from your inside. So if you have a great personality, if you're fun, you're loving, you're positive, even when you're 85, it doesn't matter. You, yeah, you can't see the outer person when their inner self shines so bright. 100%. So I think that if people are holding on to the way they look and their vanity, at some point they're going to hit a wall and they are going to suffer because I, I'm actually, it's very hard for me to have surface conversations and I love when I can meet someone yeah. that we talk a little bit about more or we can share stories and experiences and give each other advice. 100%. You know? So I love that. Yeah. High five. High five. <laughs> okay. So we are now going to do some fun questions. Yay, fun Yay. time. Nargis, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, what's the funniest nickname that someone's given you? Such a weird, this, I don't even know if this, it has nothing to do with me, but someone called me nubs. Why? Nubs? No idea. Like, you know what a nub is? Like, if you yeah. cut your finger and you have a nub? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I, I don't know. They just, it was a girl. She made it up in my neighborhood. Nubs. Yeah, I understand. Nags? Nags, but nub, yeah. Nubs. Okay. Yeah, weird. It is weird. Yeah. What is the weirdest DM that you've received till now? You know, I don't really check my DMs because when I did, it was so full of not good people, <laughs> like saying nasty things and I, I get very offended. I'm like, oh. Uh, the weirdest thing, I mean, I can't say the weirdest thing because it's quite inappropriate, but I will say the nicest things have been like, or maybe it's weird, like, oh, you are my princess and I will kiss your feet <laughs> and marry you and love you forever. And I always laugh at those ones. You know, you always I was like, kiss my feet. Will you massage them too? I don't know. I'll think about it. <laughs> okay, then. When you're talking about first dates, what's been your craziest fan experience? Let's go there. Oh, my gosh. It was very in the very beginning because I didn't know how to handle so much of this love. Yeah, yeah. And I remember, I think I was in, I think it was Singapore. And one girl came, I went to the store to get something and a girl came running up to me and she just hugged me and put her head on my boobs and just wouldn't let go and she was crying and holding me. And then I was like, oh, hi, I didn't know what to do. I was like, okay. 
that could have been awkward. I'm yeah, sure that it was. was very awkward. I was like, wow, okay, yeah. l- lady, or I think she was a girl. She wasn't yeah. a lady. Yeah. Okay then. Okay then. <laughs> <laughs> you you handled that well. Yeah, I, sh- yeah. I must say that. Yeah, I, it must have been quite the shock. Yes, it was. I was just like, I do not know you. Um, and then a rumor about yourself that makes you laugh. A rumor about myself. I don't really read anything, so I don't know what rumors there are at the moment, but there was something very funny where it said I had moved into another actor's house that we were dating, and then my mom came down to visit, and this actor that they were talking about, I only met him once, or maybe once or twice, that's it. And my mom never been to India, and people were messaging me, oh, hey, it's so nice, it's probably so nice that your mom's in town. And I'm like, my mom's not here, she's never been to India. <laughs> your mom must have called you. I wonder no. what mom had yeah, to say. Yeah, mom though. didn't even know. Mom was all the way on the other side of the world. Okay, yeah. that was a funny one. That was Clearly. crazy. Yeah. Okay, uh, one actor that you still really want to work with, and why? Oh my gosh, in Bollywood? Yeah, or mm. you know what? No, we'll Bollywood. Do it. Let's stick to Bollywood. Bollywood. Yeah, but yeah. I also want to know Hollywood. I don't even know Hollywood. <laughs> Just say Bollywood. In Bollywood. An actor. I mean, there's so many, and there's so many new guys that are super yeah. cool. I mean, I guess Ranveer, because he's so fun. Yeah, he's, he's just so special. funny. He's special. So yeah, yeah. I like that. I like yeah. the way she describes it. Yeah. It'd be fun. It would be fun. The energy. It would be, be interesting. It would be fun. It would be a lot of energy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It would be yeah. the energy is going to be through the roof. Definitely, definitely. Has Nargis found love? Nargis has so much love. In the relationship way. Yes, of course, with myself. Because you know, on Valentine's Day, I gotta love myself. Yeah, Self love. Yeah. Well, we just did a little whole thing. We encouraging. Yes, we did. And your girlfriends? My girlfriends. I'm gonna try to see who I can hang out with for Valentine's Day. So then you're not dating Tony, with all the rumors that are there. There's a lot of rumors all the time. Only God knows. Hmm, you, interesting because you're not saying no, but I, I mean, you're not dating him then? Only God knows. Well done. Look God at knows. you. You're a pro now, Only Nargis. Very proud of you. It's been absolutely wonderful chatting yes. with you again. Yes. Um, I have clearly missed you. Yes. And this, I think, makes up for all, all our lost years. Yes, many, many years. And yes. um, cheer for the movie. And I also hope that you get wonderful roles Thank you. to explore in the yes. 2.0 version now. Yes, and we'll see each other again. We will see each other yes. again. Thank you once again. Thank Sending you. you so much love. Thank you. Thank you once again. <laughs>